nous sommes le coup de poing, boxeur de boxe, les femmes... Hello and welcome back to my humble YouTube channel. I am so happy to be here and that you are here with me. Uh, today I thought we would talk about Imani Khalif. We have not discussed the Olympics on this channel because I don't watch the Olympics. I don't watch sports very often. I do like to play sports, but I don't particularly like to watch sports. Or rather, it's not that I dislike watching sports, it's just that I have so much other stuff to watch and to do that sports are just way down my totem pole. But I do enjoy discussing controversial subjects. So, Imani Khalif, this woman from Algeria, a boxer, uh, much, much controversy has been made over this person. Uh, we saw some of her fights in uh, the, the Olympics, and she's extremely strong. Uh, in one fight, the other fighter gave up in like 45 seconds because she was hurting so badly that she could not continue. Uh, that, to me, is a pretty big red flag. Now, <clears throat> I think both sides of this debate, which is, which is surrounded whether or not this person is actually a woman, or if she is a man, is she transgender, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this debate has gotten silly, okay? I think people who are just straight up saying this is a man are not paying attention to the likely science. And I think the people who are like just straight up defending her, saying that there's there's nothing, that the only reason that you could have any doubts about this person's, you know, uh, legitimacy boxing women in the Olympics is because you're bigoted or whatever. So we've, we've come to this place where we have, a, I, you know, it, this is the Mary Sue. So you have a headline, the internet is overjoyed after Imani Khalif names JK Rowling and Elon Musk in cyberbullying criminal complaint. The internet itself is overjoyed. Uh, every, everybody who's online is happy about this. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm not really an Elon Musk fan, but I, I do like J.K. Rowling. She wrote Harry Potter. How can I not like her? And I think people really misrepresent Rowling, although I don't think she really made herself look good in this particular controversy. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't think... Um, I mean, I think this is a pretty breathless and silly article in general by Sarah Barrett of the Mary Sue. Uh, so... Khalif is is suing Rowling and Musk. There's this over cyberbullying, uh, counts of cyber harassment due to gender, public insult because of gender, public incitement to discrimination, and public insult because of origin. Uh, also, left out of the headline for some reason, Donald Trump will be investigated. Trump tweeted, so whether or not he's named in our lawsuit, he will inevitably be looked into as part of the prosecution, said Booty, her lawyer. Booty. My lawyer's name is Booty. He shakes it. Uh, people who posted abuse under pseudonyms also won't escape attention. Booty is determined to seek justice for his unfairly treated client. I sort of believe in free speech. So when I hear that someone's being sued because someone said mean things about them on Twitter, I think it's fucking ridiculous. Personally, regardless of whether I agree or disagree, I think suing and trying to like get take legal action against someone because they said something that offended you is the height of nonsense. Um, so, Khalif and Taiwan's Lin Yuting, who I'm probably saying that wrong, uh, both failed a gender test from the International Boxing Association, and we're not allowed to com compete in other boxing tournaments because they failed this test. But the test is very uh, opaque. We don't know exactly what it all entails. And so the Olympic Committee isn't using the IBA, te IBA tests. And so the Olympic Committee is allowing both these women to fight, despite very legitimate concerns that their genetic makeup, their their chromosome chromosome makeup is is gives them an unfair advantage potentially way more testosterone than women who are born with just the normal levels of 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 testosterone and estrogen and all of that it's a very complicated thing and there is this article at the bbc which i will link to what does science tell us about boxing's gender row by sophia betisa that is really 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 good this is a great article because it 
it, it has a lot of information about what they're calling DSDs, differences in sex development, and how some people are born, you know, most people are born with specific chromosomes, right? Uh, most females get two X chromosomes. Most males get an X and a Y chromosome. But that is not entirely the case for everybody. There are rare instances and a, a group of about 40 different conditions that where your genes can just be different. And, and sometimes this leads to... Uh, to women who have much higher levels of testosterone that that, do, that actually they can't process, so it doesn't make any difference. And sometimes it leads to levels of testosterone that mean they have a much higher muscle mass uh, and, and bodies that are more similar to males, but still have female reproductive organs or sometimes have testicles like inside the body. So there's all kinds, this, this huge range of, of um, different outcomes based on your chromosomes, based on your genetic makeup. And, and this can really affect things like sports. Uh, so, so there isn't just a simple like, oh, he, this is a man or they're trans or, or, or no, you can't also say that it's just a woman because there's, because it's clear that, that there are this, this, this boxer, Khalif is so much stronger and hitting so much harder than 99.99% of women could. So there's this level of like, well, I don't think we should be discriminatory. I don't think we should be um, just, you know, some of these tweets from like Musk or, or Rowling, I find very distasteful because they're like, this is a man and this man is, you know, beating up a, a women. And that's cl that like Algeria is not a place where you get transgender surgery and stuff like that. Like this is a woman, but a woman who it seems very likely has one has a DSD and has has far, far, far more testosterone and muscle mass than your typical woman. And is that fair for her to compete against women in this, in this category? I mean, it's, it sucks. I'm sure she had a really like difficult life growing up with these much more masculine features in a culture, especially like Algeria. Although since she became a boxer and became like a champion for them, I'm sure that made things easier, but I'm sure it's not particularly nice to go and become a champion and have a bunch of people telling you like, Oh look, like you're just a man, but is it fair for all the other women who are boxing? And this is, this is an issue that comes up with transgender, the transgender debate. Like when a, when a man who transitions to become a woman and then competes in female sports and is much stronger and faster and bigger and, and everything like that's that's an issue, obviously, in terms of fairness. You have to set aside, like you have to you have to look at everything: discrimination, fairness, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, then you have issues like you've, we've seen runners, Olympic runners, who who clearly have far far more testosterone than the typical female, and are beating everybody. But the difference is there is like no one's getting beat up in a race, so. I think when it comes to something like boxing or any kind of sport that has actual physical violence involved, this is even more important because it's not just about fairness anymore, it's also about safety. So um, going back to the Mary Sue, well, we'll see. This BBC piece is worth reading because it, it, a lot of uh, experts talk about this. They have different opinions, but a lot of them do agree that there needs to be more attention paid to the science uh, because it really isn't fair to just say uh, one thing or the other. It's, this is not a black and white issue. There has to be, you know, more testing um, and more uh, more standards. So uh, this one's this one of these experts says that we just need to do it like a simple che cheek swab. But another says a cheek swab wouldn't allow you to reach a robust conclusion on someone's sex and potential advantage in sport, says Professor Williams. He argues a comprehensive sex test would have to include three categories. Genetics, looking for a Y chromosome and the SRY make male gene. Two, hormones, including but not limited to testosterone. Three, the body's responsiveness to hormones like testosterone. Some people might have a Y chromosome, but be completely insensitive to testosterone. So he's arguing, and I think this is a great argument, that there should be a comprehensive sex test that, that determines whether someone should be should qualify to, to compete in these tournaments and in the Olympics. Um, but he also points out uh, that it's expensive. It requires people with very specific expertise and their ethical, ex, ethical concerns about the testing procedure. This assessment can be humiliating and includes measurements of the most intimate parts of anatomy, like the size of your breast and your clitoris, the depth of your voice, and the extent of your body air, he says. So it is a difficult thing. This is not simple. This is not black and white. I don't like the conversation in this fucking culture because it's always so binary, so black and white, like 
and you get people, you know, get these people just saying, oh, she's not a woman. She's a man. And they're spreading that shit. But then you get pieces like this, uh, this Mary Sue fucking nonsense. Um, Noted anti-transgender activist Rowling arguably added the most fuel to the fire when it came to Khalif after her fight against Italian boxer Angela Serini ended with Carini, Serini, Carini, pulling out in tears, setting pain in her nose. Rowling took to X, formerly Twitter, posted a picture of Khalif and Carini and wrote, Could any picture sum up our new men's right movement better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment, enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life's ambitions he's just shattered. So I think that is a wrong-headed thing for Rowling to say. Um... I also think it's wrong to just brush aside the fact that Angela Carini was immediately knocked out of that fight because she was hurting so badly in her nose because she'd been hit harder than any time in her boxing career. So then this article also goes into uh, like all these tweets that are so excited about how, uh, you know, um, Khalif is going to like destroy Rowling and Musk because people are idiots and that's... It's just, that's not going to happen. Uh, so anyways, I think, I think that we do, sh- that we really should look at science when it comes to this stuff and not ideological science, but actual science. We should listen to experts, even if they don't always agree. And we should have a common sense response to what's going on, which is in this day and age, as we have more science, as we have more, uh, the more of an ability to look at all this stuff rationally, make do tests and all that, that we do need to start having some kind of transparent standardized way of determining who can and cannot compete in these events because it's just not fair and it's not safe to do anything else. And I think everybody needs to cool their jets on all of this in terms of like calling someone like Khalifa man. I think like, I just think that's just such a, just a a low, gross, dirty way of of behaving. And, And then also the people responding, acting like there's no problem are really dismissing a lot of women's concerns women who trained and practiced really hard to get into the Olympics and to compete. So um, that's my take. Let's follow science. Let's not be emotional about this. Let's listen to people. Let's try to come up with something that, that makes sense. Let's not just go based on activism. Uh, let's, let's, let's base this on transparent and open testing and, and standards and determine who should be able to fight in these championships. And it sucks if you're not gonna if you don't qualify if you have too much testosterone too much muscle mass too much whatever they determine this by. But what can we what else can we do? I, I think that nobody is going to walk away completely happy from something like this. So, anyways, that's all I have to say about that. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Peace. Les marches à